Hey everyone, welcome to Maths Unraveled. There's a bit of fun and surprise in this video. To solve AMC question paper, intermediate level for 2023, I have collabed with another brilliant mathematician, a maths enthusiast from a whole different country, another part of the world. This is me, Miss A from Maths Unraveled, and this is Ali from Maths X. Hi Ali. I have included the link to his channel in, his, in the description below. Do check it out. We will be solving the questions together and hopefully you will like our collab. Let's roll. This is section one of the question paper. It has 10 questions. Each question is three marks each. All these questions are quite easy, comparatively easy, I should say. and pretty straightforward. Should not take over a minute of working out for each question. Let's begin. Question number one. A 40 minutes lesson started at 10.50 a.m. Exactly halfway through the lesson, the fire alarm went off. At what time did the fire alarm goes off? All right, to work it out, a lesson starts at 10.50. We know the lesson goes on for 40 minutes from the question and the fire alarm goes off right in the middle of the lesson. That means 20 minutes into the lesson, the fire alarm goes off. Now in this situation, we don't even need to work out what time does the lesson end. We just need to have the starting point which we have and 20 minutes into the lesson is 10.50 at 20 minutes is 11.10 a.m. This is our answer, which is option number C. Both have a vertex in common as show. What is the size of the angle marked X between them? Okay, so we know that a full circle has 360 degrees, right? And here we have, the, because this is a rectangle, so that's 90 degrees, also this one 90 degrees. So we're gonna have these two 90 degrees together are 180 plus 130, plus this X will be a full circle, which is going to be 360. So from here, we're gonna have X is equal to 50. Okay. Question number three, what is the value of this expression here? Um, this let's work it out. So it's a fraction with calculations as numerator and denominator on the numerator we have 2 plus 3 plus 4 which is 9 7 plus 8 plus 9 is 24 We have 9 24. Let's simplify it divide numerator and denominator by 3. That's the common factor So it reduces to 3 8 The answer is option number C Question four, how many 25 by 25 centimeter squares fit in this shape? Okay, so we know that one meter is a hundred centimeters, okay, making four like this, okay. So now each one over here, this is 25 centimeters. Also 50 centimeters will make two 25 centimeter so we're gonna have this shape and how many squares you see 20 by 25 by 25 you see that's eight so i'm gonna select this one question number five which one of these is equals to 57 times 953 now is a three digit multiplication by two digit don't actually get tempted into solving this question if you look at quick have a quick look at the answers they are hundreds, thousand, ten thousand, one hundred thousand, and a million number. They are quite far apart. So we don't need to actually work out the answer, even if we can, even if we can get an approximate number, we will find our answer. To get that, we let's find the closest number to nine hundred fifty-three. One thousand will be easy. Now fifty-seven times thousand is fifty-seven thousand, and the only number that is close to 57,000 is option number C, which is our answer.
This is the only possibility for our answer. Question six. Uh, actually, this question, I just did it a while ago for senior level. I think it was question two. Uh, parallelogram PQRS has an area of 60 and uh, side PQ of length 10, which length is six centimeters. Okay. How do we find the area of a parallelogram? Well, it's very easy. All you have to do is imagine you have a scissor and you cut this piece and you will take it all the way and you would add it right over here. When you do this, uh, yeah, that's good enough. When you do this, what shape do you get? Which is going to be right over this. When you cut it, you're gonna have a rectangle. So the area of the parallelogram is equal to area of the rectangle with PQ being 10. And since the area is 60, meaning that this line is six. So this is also six. So PT is six, which is the answer. Question number seven. May can travel to her grandma's house by a direct route or by a scenic route that is five kilometers longer. Let's try to draw it. So if this is Mia's home represented by this point, and this is grandma's hosh home. See, she can travel by direct route or she can go by a scenic route, but this, this route will take her five kilometers longer. So if the original route was A, the scenic route will be A plus five kilometers. Now let's read the rest of the question. When she travels by the scenic route and comes directly home, the round trip is 35 kilometers. So that means if she's going this path, A plus five, and then she comes back by the direct route plus a this takes her 35 kilometers now solving this equation this 2a plus 5 this is 35 subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation 2a equals to 30 which implies dividing both sides by 2 a is 15 so a is 15 kilometer so this is the direct route. The scenic route is plus five, that's 20 kilometer. Let's see what the question is asking us. How long is the direct route? Direct route is 15 kilometers. So C, that's our answer for this question. Question eight, what is the value of this expression? Uh, well, I'm gonna do it in two ways. Uh, let's first find the value inside this bracket, right? Two to the power of zero is one. Okay, and then we're gonna have one to power of two and then power of three. So it's going to be one to power of two. Again, one squared is one and one cubed is one. Okay, we could also do it another way. Okay, which is going to be from outside. So if we know that when we have powers, we multiply them. So this is going to be two to power of zero to power of two times three, which is going to be six. And then again, we multiply these two powers. So it's going to be two to power of six times zero, which is going to be again, two to power of zero, which is going to be one again. Question number nine, what must 0 0.05 be divided by to get a 50. Now, some of you may be able to do it mentally, but let's work on a method as well. 0 0.05 divided by a number, let's assume this is A, and we want to get 50 as an answer. Re -re Rearranging the terms, A equals to 0 0.05 divided by 50. Now, simplifying the numerator, is it can be written as 500. And there's a 50 here. Now simplifying the terms. This is 10, which is 1,000, which means A equals to 0 0.001 plus 1,000. So this is our answer, which is option number D. In 
the right angle triangle ABC shown, what is the value of Y? Okay, so first uh, see that we have this line over here and the total area of this line is gonna be like half a circle. A full circle is 360, half of it is 180. So 3X plus 2X, 5X is equal to 180. So from here, we're gonna have the value of X, which is going to be 36. Okay, so we have X. And now pay attention in this ABC triangle right over here. I'll change my color. Here, this ABC, okay. We know that the total internal angles is 180. And this one is 90, okay? So that means this X plus this Y is 90 degrees because we're gonna have X, Y plus Y plus this 90 is 180, which makes X plus Y 90. So that means X plus, no, I'm sorry, 36 plus Y is equal to 90. So it's gonna be 54. This is section two of our question paper. This section has 10 questions, question number 11 to 20, and each question will be four marks each. Let's begin. Question number 11. The number 11 can be written as the sum of three positive whole numbers in many ways. In how many ways can this be done where the numbers are different and in increasing order? There are two conditions for our set of numbers. They should be all different and in increasing order. Now to help us, I have drawn a table here to keep track of our three numbers, the possible scenarios, A, B, and C. And since they are in increasing order, let's see that this is the highest number of all, the largest number to maintain the increasing order. Now, since we know A plus B plus C is 11, that means none of these numbers can be more than 11. Now, if we have an 11 here, of course, we don't have any positive whole numbers here, so this scenario does not work. We cannot have 11 as one of our numbers. For similar reasons, we cannot have 10 because I can have one number as one, but there's no other positive number. So we cannot have 10 or 11 as one of our numbers. Let's try nine. If we have nine as one of the numbers, that means A plus B, two numbers, the rest of the numbers must add up to two. The only case is one, one, but in this case, the both numbers are same. So this does not work as well. Let's try eight. So if this is eight, A plus B must be three. Now there are two, there's only one way to get that. We can have one and two. Two and one will give me the same, the same set of numbers. So one, two, and eight. This does work because it's an increasing order and all numbers are different. Um, let's try seven here. If C seven, that means other two numbers must add up to four. This can be done in two ways one three or two two now in this case the numbers are the same the number should not be repeated so we cannot accept that the only way we can have is one three so this is okay exploring further if this is six that means a plus b must be five so the options for that is one and four or two and three both these situations do work for us one four six increasing order all different digits or two three six that works as well let's explore further if this is five that means a plus b must be six this can be done in many ways one five two four or three three now we cannot accept three three they're similar digits but these two can work so let's write down one Oh, 155 actually gives us two same digits, so we cannot have 155. So this is not acceptable as well, so it's only 245. Exploring further, if C is equals to 
I'm short of space. C is equal to 4. That means A plus B must be 7. All right. So A plus B must be 7. That's 1, 6, or 2, 5, or 3, 4. These are the different possibilities. Now, 1, 6, in this case, it will be 1, 6, 4, but we have already explored this option above here. So we cannot repeat it. Um, this is gone 2, 5. If we write 2, 5, 4, that's actually, again, the condition is already used above. 2, 5, 4, that set is already used. 3, 4, 4. If we use 3, 4, 4, the digits will be repeated. So none of these work, actually. And now, I cannot get any further. If we have 3, of course, we cannot find 2 more numbers that can have us give the order in increasing order so none of the other sets would work so these are all the possible sets let's count one two three four five we have po five possible sets that can work for our condition so the answer is five a two digit number is reversed then added to itself the answer cannot be um, when I just first uh, saw this question, I just quickly uh, noticed that uh, 55 is a multiple of 11, multiple of 11, multiple of 11, right? It has to do something with that. Okay, so we have a two-digit number. We could write it as AB, okay? So, and then we're going to uh, reverse that. Okay, and then add it together, something like this. Okay, and uh, so here, the first one we could write it as, okay, 10A, because it's in the tens place, obviously, plus B. Okay, this one will be 10B plus A. So now let's add these two instead. So. We're going to get what we do. It's going to be 10B plus B, 11B. 10A plus A, 11A. So obviously we're going to have 11A plus B or B plus A. So you would see that the sum of these two numbers is definitely a multiple of 11. So this is divisible by 11, divisible by 11, so they can be. This one, uh, let's see, 110, 20, 12 times 11. Yes, it is. Okay. So uh, from here, 132 plus another 11 is 143 plus another 11, 154. So this one is actually, so that means this one is not a multiple of 11. So um let's see so 186 if we divide it by 11 we'll see that it's going to be like one one here 76 which is not going to be divisible so e is the right answer so for this type of question even if you didn't you couldn't think of this you could just uh basically guess some numbers and sum them up right for example maybe say um i don't know like 62 and then 26 just come up with these numbers and then you will solve it one way or another question number 13 amy designed this rectangular flag for our fleet of yachts we can see the flag here she designed what fraction of the flag is shaded now in order to find the fraction that is shaded we need to find the area of the different parts. Now we can see the colored part is divided into the color, the shaded part is made up of three zones. This is area one, area two, and area three. All these three areas are triangles. And to find the area of these triangles, you will use the formula area of a triangle is half base into height. So this will be the formula that we'll be using. Um, so area of the first part, the base is two. So half 
base and the height is here which is 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6 so this is 6 similarly area of the second part here the base is 2 again but in this case the height of this triangle from here to this point is actually this here which is 4 so the area of this rectangle triangle is 4 and the third area this part is again the base is 2 and the height is similarly similar to a2 is still 4 so the area is 4 so <clears throat> the total area of the shaded part is a1 plus a2 plus a3 which is 6 plus 4 plus 4 is 14 and now to find the area what fraction we need to find the fraction so we need to have the area of the shaded part divided by the total area area of the shaded part we just calculated it is 14 the whole area is the area of this rectangle which is length times width which is 4 times the length is 6 actually and width is 4 it's 4 times 6 14 over 24 let's simplify this divide the numerator and denominator by 2 which is 7 12th so 7 12th is the answer for this question option number e what is the largest possible whole number value of this expression where a b c d e f are the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 in some order okay so we want to maximize this value right so that means we want to max this also maximize c over d but this negative one we want to minimize this okay so now we want to maximize a times b right Okay, so what is the largest values we can give them? 6 and 5. So this will already give us 30. Okay. If you keep 6 and y for this one, for example, you just use 6, 5 here, it's a waste, right? So if you use, for example, instead of putting 6 here, you will put it here. The value becomes smaller. You could give that a try. Okay. Now if we want to make this one maximum okay the next one will be 4 over 1 okay and this one we only have 2 over 3 so we want to make it as least less as possible so it's going to be 2 over 3 so this is the maximum but there is a problem it's not a whole number value okay it will be a fraction or a decimal so that means i'm going to change the little so what is the next biggest number? If it's not 4 over 1, it is 3 over 1. Minus. Now, what is what numbers are left? 2 and 4. Again, we will make it less if I, wrote, if I wrote it like this. But it wouldn't make it a decimal, so I have to write it. It wouldn't make it a whole number, so I have to write it like this. Okay? So this would be 30. So 3 minus 2 will be 1. So it's going to be like 30 plus 1 is equal to 31. Question number 15. Four children named from youngest to oldest are Abdul, Bipin, Kai, and Denise have ages which are equally spaced apart. This is very important. They are equally spaced apart. Abdul and Pippin's age add up to 18, while Kai and Denise's ages add up to 34. We have to find Denise's age, but before that, we have to work out other people's ages as well. Let's see. Let these four children and their ages be denoted by A, B, C, and D, just for our ease. And they are equally spaced apart. So that means if A and B are two years apart, that would be the same for B to C and C to D. And actually, if this is same, this turns A, B, C, D, their ages into an arithmetic progression. So we can easily apply the rules of an arithmetic progression here. Now, in the question, it says that 
Abdul and Bipin's age add up to 18, so A plus B is equals to 18, and Kai and Denise's age add up to 34, so C plus D is 34, which means the total of all the children's ages, the four children's ages is 18 plus 34, which is 52. Now, since this is an AP and this is our total, I can divide the total by 4, which are the number of terms here. And this is 1, 3. This is the average that I got for all their ages. And since looking, at, looking back, these are 4. These are 4 terms or 4 numbers in our sequence. So the average is not an actual number. The average is right in the middle. Now, we do not know whether they are two years apart, three years apart, how, how far apart they are. So we'll have to try um, one or two or three working out to find the answer. So if this is 13, this is our average. Let's assume this is 12, which is one year more than the average, and this is 14. And this turns the age difference to two, to two years. That means this is 16 years going by the same jump in ages and this will be 10 years but as you can see a plus b must be 18 but here a plus b is 22 which does not work for us so that means we cannot go with two years age gap all right going back let me put this arrow back so that means from 13 I should not go one down let's try going two years backwards so if this is 11 and going two years forward here this is 15 and now in this case from B to C the jump of the years is four years and following the same pattern so a is 7 and 15 plus 4 is 19 now let's see if these con our conditions work for this a is 7, B is 11, so A plus B is 18, so this condition is fulfilled. 15 and 19, C plus D, 19 plus 15 is equals to 34, so this condition is also fulfilled. So these are the ages that we were looking for. They are A, B, C, D, R, 7, 11, 15, and 19 years old. We want to find the age of the oldest child, Denise, which is 19. So the answer is 19, option number D. The country of Exponentia uses six-digit telephone numbers. At the moment, this is plenty since there are only a thousand phone numbers in use. However, increasing population and the phone usage means that the number of phone numbers need to double each year. Approximately how many years will it take for Exponentia to run out of phone numbers? Okay, so we have how many phone numbers? It says six digits. So how many six digits number do we have? Okay, so it's going to be like almost this value, right? So because uh, it says approximately, so we're going to round this to a million. Okay, it's gonna be less than this, obviously, okay? So, uh, and then uh, we're gonna have uh, only a thousand. And then the next year is going to be multiplied by two, double. Next year is going to be multiplied by two. Next year is going to be multiplied by two. I want to know when is that going more than a million? six years okay so we're just gonna solve this exponential inequality so instead of writing two 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 and just try each one which takes a lot of time um, we're going to write it as an equation or better inequality so we're just gonna have to solve this to do that okay we can divide both sides by a thousand so the left hand side will be canceled. So we're gonna have two to the power of x. From this side, we're just gonna, I'm gonna clean three zeros away. So now, which power, okay, 
is going to be more than 1000. I think a lot of you know. If you don't know, you have to try 2 to the power of 10. It's going to be 1024. And the number is 10. And you would see that the other options are too far, right? So you don't have to worry about, okay, maybe I didn't round this number well. No, the options are way too different. Okay, so that's it. Question number 17. A 15 by 15 square of origami paper is dark blue on top and pale yellow underneath. We can see this is the origami paper, that which was different on both sides. The color is different and it's folded in a way. Just to visualize what has happened. This is a square piece of paper. They have taken this corner and joined with, made a crease on the other side and folded this along. So this actually has been turned into a shape like this. So this is the line of crease and they are folded and this we can see here. So now on this portion, we can see the yellow, which was the, the color on the under, other side. Now reading the rest of the question. Once folded, the visible regions of yellow and blue paper have equal area. So whatever you can see here is the same area as the blue part as well. Now, in order to solve that, we have to look at the diagram really quite closely. Now, because this was a square, the sides were 15. So before folding, even this and this together was 15. But now X is here and this part of 15 is here. Now, just for the ease of calculations, we will assume that this is a and x will be 15 minus a because together they are 15 of course they are they came from the same side of the square um, and because this was the side of a square this was the side of the square that was folded this is 15 and this is 90 degree angle this is a right angle triangle this was the folded part now let's proceed area of the yellow part now ju just like we talked the yellow part is a right angle triangle so the area is half base into height we can see the base is a and the height because it's a right angle triangle the other side is the height as well so it's 15 which turns it into 7.58 so this is the area of the yellow part now area of the blue part now imagine the area of the blue part is the total area of the whole square that was before so that the area of the square was 15 times 15 this was the area of the square and take away what has been taken away now we do see this part is covered up this part is covered up this is yellow but this has also taken up a, a part that was underneath that so below this yellow yellow part there's another triangle of the same area that we, we cannot see anymore so we actually after folding we have taken away twice the area of the triangle that we can see so the tri twice the area of the yellow part so we already know this is 225 take away we already know what is the area of yellow part from the first equation that is 7.5 a and solving it further this is 225 7.5 double of that is 15 a so this is the area of the blue part now according to the question the area of the yellow part and the area of the blue part is same now equating these two 7.5a must be equals to 225 take away 15a solving it further we can um, add 15a to both sides and this will be 22.5a equals to 225 now to solve it further we can divide both sides by 22.5 which means A is equals to 225 divided by 22.5, which is 10. So if A is 10, 
that means the side that we were looking for x is 15 minus 10 which is 5 centimeter x equals to 5 centimeter this is our answer let's look this is option number a In this equation, the coefficient of y has been hidden, but we know that it's a positive integer 1 or more. The equation has at least one solution where x and y are positive integers. How many different values are possible for the hidden coefficient? Okay, if you understand the question, then you have to just be good at making a list. There is nothing else about this question. So... The smallest value for x that could work is 1. So let's just start. Let's be organized. We start from x equal 1. So this becomes 2. 2 plus some y is 25. And then this 2 and this 25 will cancel a little. So we're going to have, okay, 2. I'm going to write it again, plus 25. But we don't know this value over here. I'm going to put a question mark. So we're going to have question mark y is equal to 23. 23 is a prime number. Okay. So if I leave this coefficient as 1, wow, that's one solution. Okay. But can I, for example, if I put here instead of the coefficient, if I put 2, okay. So 2y will be 23, y will be 11.5. It's a solution, but we want y to be integer. So can I put 3? No. 4? No. 6? No. 7? No. It's a prime number, so only 23. If I put 23, then y will be 1, which is an integer. So for this one, if x is 1, we came up with two values, maybe y1, Maybe y is 23, okay? But here it says how many different values are possible for the hidden coefficient. So we have two. Now we have y1 and, and also 23, okay? So I'm going to clean all of this. The next integer for x is 2, okay? Let's just repeat the same process. This is... 2 is going to be 4, so we're going to have question mark y is equal to 21, okay? If I put y1, we have already done it. We don't care about that because we already have it here. 2y, now 3y will work because y will be 7, so I'm going to add 3 here. I could also write 7y because y will be 3, so I'm going to add 7 here too. We could also write 21y because y will be 1. So I'm going to add 21. So you just have to make sure that you do all the way without making a mistake. So this will be 6. Okay. So y will be 19, which is a prime number. Okay. So y could be either 1 or it could be like 19y equals 19. Y will be 1. So 19 is a new number. Okay. So I think we're getting a hang of it. I'm going to be a little faster. So if this is 4, this will be 17. Okay, so y17 will be added. So then this become 10. So we're going to have question mark y is equal to 15. y could be 1. We already have it. Could be 3. We already have it. Could be 5. We don't have it. Could be 15. So I'm going to add 15 too. So now it's 12, y will be 13. So I'm going to add it here. Okay, so it was 12, now it will be 14. So we're going to have like 11y. So do we have 11 on the list? No. Okay, so we had like 11. Then we're going to have like, this becomes 9y. So we're going to have a uh, question mark, y is equal to 9. Okay, so 1, 3, and 9. We have 1, we have 3, we don't have 9. The next one will be 
question mark y will be equal to 7. So y could be 1 or 7, we already have it. The next one could be 5. 1 and 5, we already have it. 3, we already have it. And 1, we already have it. So that's going to be all of it. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's going to be really tricky, right? When, when I see a question like this, it's just, oh, maybe I just like didn't count one. But uh, 10, 11, 12, that's 12, okay? So if you have time later in the test, maybe you want to come back and check it. All right, we are on question number 19. Farmer Smith had a square property that he extended by buying a smaller square of land. So he had this big piece of land here, and then he bought this extra small piece. Now this square of land increased the total perimeter of the property by 10%. The perimeter increased by 10%. By what percentage did the area of the property increase? In order to work that out, let's have a closer look at the impact of buying that small piece of land. Now before, let's assume our, the square land piece had side lengths of AAA. So that means the perimeter before was 4A of the big square piece. Now this square added this side, this side, this side, and this side which was closed before. Now with the addition of this little piece, when we calculate the perimeter, we go here and we go around the shape and come back here this ineffectiveness you can assume that the piece that was here is now replaced by the piece here and effectively we have just added let me grab another color we have effectively added these two pieces here which has led to the increase of 10 percent area a 10 percent perimeter now let's come back to our calculation. So the total perimeter before was 4A and now it has increased by 10%. 10% of 4A is 10 hundred of 4A, which is 4A by 10. So this is the increase in perimeter. And this increase in perimeter, as we said, has come from these two little pieces. That means 4A, over 10 divided by 2 is 2a over 10 so this must be the this must be the measurement of these the little square so each side is 2a over 10 now to find the increase in per area let's find what is the area of the land before the area of the land before was a square is a square now this little piece of square was added let's assume this was area one area two denotes to the area of the little square now we know the sides are 2a by 10 so the area of the small piece is 2a by 10 multiplied by 2a by 10 and this is 4a squared by 10. So the total area increased by a squared plus 4a squared by 10. 4 tenth of a squared is 4, 4, oh no, sorry, that was 400. 400, not 4, 10. 10 by 10 is 100. So 400 refers to 4 percent so there's an increase of four percent in the area so the answer is b i hear that dogs age seven dog years every year my dog ruby was born on my ninth birthday four years from now on our birthday ruby's age in dog years will be exactly four times my age in normal years how old am I now? Okay, this question is giving a lot of information in a very confusing manner. When this happens, a uh, diagram really, really helps. Okay, so the person's nine, right? When the person is nine, Ruby, the dog, okay, is zero, right? This is the dog, Ruby. Okay. Then this one will be when this person becomes 10, 
the dog is 7. When this person becomes 11, now the dog is already, it has aged more years than this person. And then 12, so 21, okay? So you have to continue this until you find that this number becomes four times of this, okay? So maybe you will continue it, it takes time, or you write a simple equation, okay? If this one, let me change color. See, well, we're gonna just increase, how many years will this be, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna call this X years, okay? The same per the dog will just age, 7x, right? Seven times more. So the human will be 9 plus x, but the dog will be 7x. But we don't want them to be equal, right? We don't want them to be equal. We want the dog to be four times more. The human here, four times less. Okay. If we multiply the human by four, then their age will be equal, right? Without this four, the dog is four times more. If I multiply the human by four, they will be equal. So we just have to solve this equation. We're gonna have 36 plus four X is equal to seven X. So we're gonna have three X is equal to 36. So X will be 12. Okay. So this is 12, right? So that means after 12 years, since uh, Ruby was born, okay, will be the answer. So that means we're gonna have 12 of these, okay? So nine plus 12, the person becomes 21. The dog will be seven times 12, which is 84. You see now that after 12 years, the dog is 84 years, the person 21 is four times more. So we have the right answer. But 21, first of all, is not the option, making the question easier, okay? Because a lot of people would select 21 right away. But here it says, four years from now, I'll be 21. I'm not 21 yet, I'm four years less. So one year back, 20, 19, 18, and 17, okay? So we're gonna have 17 will be the right choice. We are on section three of our question paper. This section has five questions and each question is worth five marks. The difficulty level of these questions is definitely higher from what we had in section one and two. All right, let's go. Question number 21. An ancient beast guards a two by two, two kilometer by two kilometer square building, as we can see here in the diagram, on an otherwise featureless plane. A four kilometer unbreakable chain connects the beast to the outside wall of the building. So this, the building that the beast is guarding is the square where here two kilometer by two kilometer and the beast is tied to this point and this rope is four kilometers. Neither the beast nor the chain can cross into the area that is occupied by the building. Now we must remember that, that the beast cannot at any point go inside the building or even a part of chain, there can be no situation where even a part of chain can be inside the building and the beast is here. So even this is not allowed. All right, so the question is, what is the area that the beast can access in square kilometers? Now, in order to find out the area that beast can explore, let's make a diagram. All right, so then let this square represent the area that the beast is guarding. The measurements for this square is two kilometers by two kilometers and the beast is tied to this point which is midway of the side length and the rope that he's tied to extends four kilometers so one kilometer is 
the distance from here to here and he has three kilometers more of row. Now, in order to find the total area that the beast can explore, because it's different regions, we'll have to divide that area into different parts. Let's see. So if the beast were to explore the area down below, now there are no restrictions. So he still connected to that center point. He can, let me draw it here. He can go around this semicircle and explore all this area. So going from, going to a semicircle with radius equals to four kilometers. Now, since we are to find the area, let's call this area one. Now, we are going to use the area of a circle, the formula area equals to pi r squared. We are going to use this formula again and again. So, in order to calculate the area of this first part, this is a semicircle, so this is half pi r squared. Now, r in this case is 4 kilometers, so this is 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so it's 16 pi by 2, which is 8 pi. So, the area of this part here is 8 pi. Now let's explore another part. Now consider he has reached here if he wants to explore the area above. Now there are restrictions because one kilometer rope is already being used up here and now he has just this rope here which is three kilometer that he can use to go around. Now let's see. So with this rope here he can explore this quarter of a circle with the radius of three kilometers so this let this be a2 but similarly from the other side if he extends the rope to the other side one kilometer is used here and three kilometers more and he can explore another three kilometers here a quarter of a circle uh, with radius three kilometers now let's call this a2 prime and together a2 and a2 prime a2 plus A2 prime is together is semicircle with the radius of three kilometers. Let's ex that's half of pi r square, which means half of pi. In this case, the radius is three. So this is nine pi by two, which is 4.5 pi. So this is the second area of this part and this part together. Now, this is not all that he can explore. He can actually go around more. Let's grab a different color. Um, okay. Now, when he is at this point here, now the rope that's already being used is one kilometer here and two kilometers here, but he still has one kilometer rope here more, which he can use. So now the center of the circle will be here and he can go around like this part. He can explore this part more while still being tied to the original point. And similarly, if he reaches this point from the other side, he's used one kilometer of rope here, two kilometer of rope here, and he still has one kilometer rope left, and he can use that to explore this region here. So let's call this A3 and A3 prime. And as we can see, if we um, join A3 and A3 prime, that's another semicircle of radius one kilometer. So let's find it out a3 equals to half of pi r square but in this case the radius is just one kilometer so pi one square which is just one so it's pi over two since i have this in decimal let's change this also into decimal 0 0.5 pi so this is all the area that the beast can explore now since the question asked us what is the area that the beast can access in square kilometers we just need to add these three areas and find out our answer let's work on that so total area equals to a1 plus a2 plus a3 a1 is 8 pi a2 together a2 and a2 prime is 4.5 pi and a3 which is a3 and a3 prime together is 0 0.5 pi now 4.5 and 0 0.5 is 5 pi and together with 8 pi this is 13 pi so this is the total area that the beast can explore still tied to this point around the square area so the answer is 13 pi e
Question number 22. This is a very interesting question. I have four numbers. When I add th three to my first number, subtract three from the second number, multiply the third number by three, and divide the fourth number by three, my four answers are all equal. My original four numbers add up to 32. What is the sum of the largest two of my numbers? Now, in order to explore the options possible, I have made this table. Since if we have four numbers, let's consider them A, B, C, and D. So these are our four numbers. And as the question stated, you have to add three to a number. So let this be the number that you add three. The second number, you have to take away three from that number, multiply the third number by three, and to the last number, you divide by three. And all these numbers, original numbers, A plus B plus C plus D, has a total of 32. So this is all the information that is given to us. All right. In, our, in order to work out the different possibilities, if we were to explore all the possible four, four numbers that add up to 32, there are too many options. So we need to restrict those number of options to work out an answer. Now, let's look at this A. Now, to add 3 to any number, yes, we can do that. Yes, we can take away 3 from any number. And we can also multiply 3 by any number. But to divide a number by 3 and get the same answer from these columns as well, we will need a multiple of 3 in this column here. So this is the column that we will start our, start our calculations with and put our focus on. So since we know D has to be a multiple of 3, let me just put the arrow. This is that column that we are putting our focus on. Let me write down all the multiples of 3. They are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. We cannot go any higher because the total is 32. And now let's ex start exploring these numbers. So if we were to have 30 in here, 30 divided by th 30 actually we do not have three more numbers to work on because our total is 32. So we actually cannot work with 30. We cannot have 30 in here. So 30 is off the table. Let's explore 27. So if we were to have 27 here, we just need five more. Yes, let's try to work that out. So let me draw a line. So this was the number before. Before. And after the calculation. All right, so 27 divided by 3 will give us 9. And to get a 9 from this column as well, this would have to start with 3. And to get a 9 from this column, we would have to start with a 12. And to get the same number, the same answer from the other calculation as well, we'll have to start with a 6. Let's add them up. 6 plus, we can see 27 plus 3 is 30. And plus 18 is way more than 32. Our total of the original numbers must be 32. So although this works, A, B, C, D, since they are giving a total of higher than 32, 27 does not work as well. Let's take them out. All right. Now let's keep exploring. Let's start 24. Now 24, if D was 24, the answer would be 8. To get answer 8 here, we do not have any number here that can multiply by 3 to still get the 8 here. So 24 is off the table. Let's try 21. For similar reasons, 21 divided by 3 is 7. To get an answer of 7 here, there is no number here for us. There is no number that we can multiply to get a 7. So 21 is also not the right answer for us. Let's try 18. If we were to have 18 here, after the calculation, this would be 6. And to get a 6 from the other calculation, we'll have to start with 2. To get a 6 here, we will have to start with 9. To get a 6 here, we'll have to start with a 3. Now, this case works. Now, the only thing left is to add up three number these numbers and check if the total is 32. 18 plus 2 is 20. 9 plus 3 is 12 and that does give us 32 which was our which was one of our conditions and these numbers 3 9 2 and 18 follows all the conditions that were mentioned in the question so this is our solution set 3 9 2 and 18 this is our solution set now the question that they are asking is what is the sum of the largest two of my solution set the largest numbers are 
18 and 9. So 18 plus 9 is 27, which is the answer. Let's see. This is option number D. This is the correct answer. These two rectangular prisms have the same surface area. Both x and y are integers less than 10. What is x plus y? Uh, I don't think it's a difficult question. It could be a little long, but not difficult. Okay. So pay attention that this one is 8 times 4. Okay. And from each side, like, okay, from each area, from each face, we're going to have 2, right? So every side will multiply it by 2. And then at the end, because everything has it, the other side also has this. Then we divide it by 2. It makes sense to just uh, find the area of one face and just add those to become faster. But I'm not going to do it. I don't want to be confusing to anyone. So, however, I'm going to write it like this. So this is going to be 8 times 4, which is going to be 32. And we're going to have two of it. Okay, so I'm going to write it, however, like this. 2 times 32 because I'm going to cancel it later. Okay, plus. This one is 4x. I'm going to have two of it. Plus 2 times 4x. And this side will be 8x. And again, we're going to have two of it. So we're going to have 2 times 8x. If you are multiplying this, you're just waiting, wasting your time. Okay, is equal to, again, 6 times 7, we're going to have 2 times 42. Okay, plus, we're going to have this 7y, 2 of it, plus 2 times 7y. Okay, and then this one, the last one, 6y, so we're going to have 2 times 6y. So if you see that 2, 2, 2 is common, you could take out 2 from both sides, factorize it and divide it. Or each term, we know that we could divide each term by 2. Like this one divided by 2, this one, this one, all of them will be divided by 2. And then these 2's will be canceled, as I said before. So let me make it black. So this 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 is extra. I shouldn't even have written it. So it's going to be like 32 plus 12x is equal to 42 plus 13y. So minus 32 to both sides, we're going to have 12x is equal to 10 plus 13y. Okay, now pay attention. The value of y could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay? But you see, the left-hand side is 12 times x, definitely even, okay? So 10 is even. So 13y should also be even, right? Even, even, even. And 13 is odd. If y is an odd number, like 1, 13 times 1 is odd. You add it by even becomes odd. So that means y has to be an even number too. Okay, so that means instead of going all the way, so y is either 2, 4, 6, or 8. One of them is the answer. So actually, it's just the first one. So y is 2 because let's try. If y is 2, this will be 26. All of this will be 36. So we're going to have 12x is equal to 36. x will be 3. And as I said, y is 2. So the question is asking for x plus y. 5 is the right answer. Sometimes a three-digit number is an exact multiple of its digit sum. For instance, the digit sum of 102 is 1 plus 0 plus 2 is equal to 3. 
and 102 is equal to 3 times 34. If a three-digit number is k times the sum of its digits, what is the smallest possible integer value of k? Okay. So let's understand the question better. Uh, this is the three-digit number. Okay, this will be k, right? And this is its sum. Okay, I could also rewrite this. Whatever the three-digit number is, we divide it by its sum, its digit sum, and we're going to get k. And we want the k to be smallest. So if the k is supposed to be smallest, we want to maximize the sum. And we want to minimize this value. So what is the biggest sum that you could write? If it's three digit number, it belongs to 999. So the biggest is 27, okay? But if you go with this 999 over here, you're also maximizing this number, okay? 999 is the maximum. So well, let's think about it, okay? Because I want to minimize this, I think, it makes sense to say, okay, whatever it is, I'm gonna just make this one one, okay? And then, okay, I'm going to uh, write a number, okay, uh, to max this, okay. What I think of is this, okay. I'm going to go with this one. If one of them is one, I'm going to put a nine here and an eight here, okay. So now the sum of these numbers is 18, not 27. Okay, 18, but at the same time, I made this like as a small as possible or like 100 and something. So I just have to divide them. Let's see the value of K that I could find is 198 divided by 18. Okay, so it's the same as I'm going to divide them both together. It's going to be 98, sorry, 99 divided by 9. This is equal to 11. Okay, so I'm going to choose this value. Okay, so that was the whole idea behind it. Question number 25. Six identical equilateral triangles of side length 2 are drawn outside a regular hexagon of side length one. Now to understand it closely, let's have a closer look. So this is the hexagon that they started with, a regular hexagon of side length one. So each side is of size one, length one, and equilateral triangles of side length two are drawn outside. So let me change the color. So from each of these sides, equilateral triangles are drawn of side lengths two. Now it means if this is two, this part is right in the middle because we already know one is one. So one is here and the outside part is one as well. All right, we have to remember that. And now let's continue reading. Defining a larger hexagon as shown. Now because of these points here that we have Found of these equilateral triangles when we join them they can make a larger regular hexagon the question is what is the ratio of the area of the larger hexagon to the area of the smaller hexagon now in order to find the area we must look at these um, diagrams closely let's have a look so we know let's consider this as area one area one of the smaller hexagon now in order to solve this you must know that the area of a hexagon is the formula is three under root three divided by two of a squared this is the formula that we'll be needing to solve this question all right so the area of a little hexagon inside is 3 under root 3 divided by 2. Now, each side is 1 unit. So, 1 square is just 3 underscore 3 over 2. So, this is the area of the 
smaller hexagon. Now, in order to find the area of the larger hexagon, if we look closely, the, the larger hexagon is made up of this uh, hexagon and six of these triangles, equilateral triangles, and six of these triangles here. So if we can find the area of all these different pieces, we can join together to find the area of the larger hexagon. Area of the equilateral triangles is actually easy to find. Again, to find the area of equilateral triangles, equilateral triangles, there are six of these with side lengths of two. So find the areas of six of these, so this is area two, we need to have, we have six of these and the area of each equilateral triangle. Again, we are going to use a formula for area of a triangle and this is using trigonometry half A, B, sine C. This is the area of a triangle. A, B are the side lengths and sine C, this is the angle, of, the sine of the angle in between them. Now, because this is an equilateral triangle, we know each angle is 60 degrees. So let's, let this be A, this be B, and we have to find sine C. So six multiplied by half of A, B, and sine of 60 degrees. So this is, two gets cancels, two sine of 60 is under root three by two. So this is, again, this gets canceled, this is six under root three. So this is the area of the six equilateral triangles. Now focusing are on the outer triangles here. Now, let me draw it here. So all the triangles outside are equal. Now we know this side here is coming from, this shares the side with the equilateral triangle. So this is two. And this side here is the remaining part from the whole length. And we just set, said it in the beginning that this part is one and this part is also one. So this, the side length is one. And uh, let's work out the area for these six parts. So the third area, again, because there are six different such triangles and they are equal six times of, we are going to use this formula again, half A is one, B is two. Oh, now thinking about the angle, if we know this angle, we can find that angle and find the sign of that angle and we can find this area. Now again, looking closely, let me remove some of this so that we can see. We are aiming to find this angle here. Now we already know this angle here is 60 degree and this is a straight line. So that means our angle inside is 120 degrees. So this angle here is 120 degrees. So coming back, we have worked it out. So this is sine of 120 degrees. So this is six. This was two. So two, two gets canceled. Sine of 20 is um, under root three over two. So this is three under root three. So this is the total area of the six parts from outside this here. So the total area, let's work it out. So the total area of the bigger hexagon is A1 plus A2 plus A3. A1 is, we found it out here, three under root three divided by two. A2, which is the equilateral triangles, was six under root three. And A3, which was the area of the triangles outside, is three under root three. So adding these up, it is the 
this is 1.5 under root 3 plus 9 under root 3 so this is 10.5 under root 3 so this is the total area but the, the question is what is the ratio of the area of the larger hexagon to the smaller hexagon so the ratio the larger hexagon is 10.5 under root 3 and the smaller one is area 1 which was 3 under root 3 divided by 2 which we actually can write it as 1.5 under root 3 under root 3 under root 3 gets cancelled and this is how many 1.5s go into 10.5 1 times 7 is 7 and 3 more so this is actually 7 so the ratio is 7 is to 1 now if you did not have to actually change it into decimals you could have kept it in fractions and solved it but the answer would still be the same 7 is to 1 let's work it let's see the answer is C all right we are on question number 26 and with question number 26 we start the section 4 the final section of our question paper. This section has five questions. Each question is grows higher in difficulty, goes more challenging, and so does the, the marks. 26 question is six marks. The next question will be seven, eight, nine, and finally the 30th question will be 10 marks. So the difficulty level and the challenge level of the questions keep increasing as well all right let's read question number 16 of oh, 26 sienna was arranging her collection of postage stamps into groups when a cat jumped onto them and scattered the stamps all she can remember is that when she put them into groups of two or three or four or five or six she always had one stamp left what that means is so when you divide by two or three or four or five or six you will always get a remainder of one all right let's continue when she places them into groups of seven there were none left so our number is a multiple of seven so for all others we have a remainder of one for seven it's a multiple of seven what is the minimum number of stems Sienna could have start, could have had in our collection? Now, we have to explore many different possibilities for solving this question, and we have to be clever, otherwise this question can take loads and loads of time. Now, since we know it's a multiple of seven, so we can count up in sevens and write all the numbers possible and test it for these conditions. But also, looking at these conditions, let's have a closer look. Now, since it's not a multiple of 2, it has a remainder 1, that means we know that the number we are looking for is an odd number. And since, again, it's not a multiple of 5, it has a remainder 1, that means for a number to divide by 5 and have a remainder of 1, that means the units place, the last digit, can either be 1 or or a six these are the only two conditions where our um, remainder can be one now you, the unit place cannot be six because our number has to be odd so the only units place possible is just a one so we are looking for multiples of seven with one in the unit place now this really shortens the procedure otherwise you'll have to go through each multiple of seven and just like i said you will get the same answer but it will consume more time so we are looking for multiples of seven with the units place of one now let's continue let's write so we'll start with seven of course now when we count in sevens we notice that the, every every second number actually is an even number and that's requiring a lot of time to write all the numbers so what we can do is we can skip the second number and go on adding 14 every time 
so that we don't have to spend so much time writing all the numbers and then canceling out the even numbers we can start from seven and count in 14s and that will really really shorten the procedure so let's write down all the possible numbers 7 21 35 and then 14 more is 49 then 63 77 91 you still have to count but this has considerably reduced the workload now 119 one three three now let's stop here and see if any of these numbers work for us now we already said the number has to have a units place of one now seven does not have a unit place of one 21 does have a unit place of one let's try it so it's odd number so it fulfills this condition it oh this is a multiple of three 21 is a multiple of three so it does not work 35 is a multiple of 5. It does not work. Oh, let's focus on units place 1. Units place is not 1. This is gone. Again, units place is not 1. We can cancel out all these. This is a units place 1. So we can try to test our conditions. So it matches this condition. Let me change the color. It matches this condition. It matches this condition. When we divide by 3, we get a remainder of 1. Let's divide by four so 91 divided by four four two eight eleven so four to the eight this actually leaves a remainder of three so this does not follow this condition so 91 also did not work 105 119 33 they all do not work that means we need to keep going on so 133 keep adding 14 every time 147 161, 175, 217, wait, I jumped ahead, 175, 189, 203, 217 235 uh, 231 now we do have two numbers with a digit of one so let's explore so these other numbers are not possible they do not have a digit one in the units place let's explore 161 let me remove this so we are exploring 161 yes it follows dividing by two it's odd number division by three six seven eight when we divide by 3, it actually has a remainder of 2. It is a total of 8. That means remainder will be 2. So it does not follow the condition for division by 3. So this is gone. Off the table, let's explore 231. Now division by 2. Yes, it works. Division by 3. 3, 4, 5, 6. This, is a division. this number is divisible by 3 can add up this is six and the digit sum is divisible by three so the whole number is divisible by three so 231 is off the table as well and we have to continue so let's keep adding 14 every time so the next one is 245 259 273 287 301 now again we do not cannot have this 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 or this because the unit place is not one this does have a unit place of one so we can explore it let's see if it satisfies all the conditions so three zero one we dividing the two yes it leaves a remainder of one division by three yes it does leave a remainder of one three times hundred is three hundred and let's see divided by four so 300 divided by four is three 300 divided by four is four four times seven is 28 20 four five is 20. so 300 goes right into fours and with 301 it does read a remainder of one so yes it follows that condition as well 
division by 5 yes it has the remainder of 1 let's explore division by 6 we already know 6 times 5 is 30 so 6 times 50 is 300 so division by 6 will leave a remainder of 1 and these numbers all are a multiple of 7 so 301 actually works with all the conditions that were given to us and this is the smallest number that we have worked in our list that follows our, around our conditions. So the answer is 0301. This is our answer for question number 26. Okay. A square ABCD is inscribed in the right angle triangle EFG as shown the length of EG is 4 the length of EF is 3 so this is 4 this is 3 units so this will be 5 units okay and uh, as a fraction in simplest form the side length of the square is AB. What is the value of A plus B? Okay, so that means uh, with this, this one will result in a fraction, okay? And we simplify that fraction, okay? For example, if it's like 3 over 4, okay, the answer will be 3 plus 4 and 7. Okay, that's the question. And uh, the first thing we're going to calculate what is the area of this big triangle? It's going to be 3 times 4 divided by 2. Okay, so the area of EFG is actually 6. Okay, that's the area of it. Okay, the area of it is 6. Okay, now there's only one more point. Okay, that is, okay, all these right angle triangles, all of them are similar, and even the big one EFG, okay, all of them have the same angle, right, so that means all of them are similar, so for example, this one, with the big triangle, right, this is 90, this is also 90. And G is common for the red one and EFG the whole thing. So this angle will be equal to this angle too for this big triangle. Okay, so if all of them are similar, so we have the ratio of the areas. So for example, if we have two similar triangles, okay, this side is one. For example and we also have something that is just larger this side is 2 so what is the area of this over this if the area of this one is a the area of this one will be 4 it's going to be 2 over 1 the ratio of the sides square and that's all that you need to know to actually do this question and nothing else. It's a little long, but it's definitely not difficult, right? So let me just go and write it. So for this one that I've highlighted, this one, the red one, let's see the ratio of the area. Okay, this side of the square, let's call this one A, this side. So all side of the square, this is also A, this is also A, okay? So this one will be, okay, this is the smallest side of this red triangle. For this, this one, let me also highlight it by green. Okay, now the green one, the area of it is six, we have it. It's similar to this side, this A, is similar to this three. So we're gonna write it like this. For this red one, the area will be a over 3 squared multiplied by the area of the big triangle 6. 
plus. Now this little one, this little small one. Okay, this a now is similar to this five. So for this little fellow, it's going to be a over five squared times six plus. Now for this one, let's do some cleaning. So for this one, this side of a is the second biggest line is similar to this one over here. So I'm going to go a over four. Okay. Squared multiplied by six. Okay. Now we have added the, we have these three areas. Okay. So we also need to add the area of the square. The area of the square, of course, is going to be a squared. So plus a squared, all of these together will again be the area of the big triangle, which is going to be six. So that's it. Now we just have to solve this uh, weird equation with one variable, which, which is going to be this side. It's going to be a fraction. And then we're going to add the numerator and denominator and what will be the answer. Okay. So let's just solve a, okay. Oh, uh, let's go here. Okay. I'm going to even clean it because we no longer need the question. Let's just find the value for a. Okay. So, uh, this one now, okay. I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to take out one six or uh, uh let's not do that okay i'm just going to write this one the first one will be six over nine a squared plus six over 25 a squared plus six over 16 a squared plus one a squared is equal to six okay now we we can simplify this six over nine i'm going to write it as two thirds six over 16 i'm going to write it as three eighths okay now uh, let's see if we factorize a squared from it it's going to be like two thirds plus six over 25 plus three eighths and plus one a squared plus one multiplied by a squared is equal to six okay so this one what is 25 times eight 200 multiplied by three 600. So I'm going to write it like this, 600. Two thirds will be 400 over 600. This one multiplied by 24, six times 24 is going to be 144. Okay, this one multiplied by 75 times three, 225 plus 600 for the last one. One is equal to 600 over 600. All of this multiplied by a squared is six. Oof. So now let's change color. 600 plus 400 plus 400 is 1000. These two is, are going to be 300. 69 so it's going to be 1369 over 60. actually this is going to be uh like the year i was born in persian calendar like i'm born in that year so and uh, this multiplied by a squared is equal to six okay Let's multiply both sides by a 600. Okay, or you could think about where cross multiplying, whatever you want. So we're gonna have 
Okay, 1369a squared is equal to 3600. So a squared, or let's just write it this way, is equal to a square root of 3600 over 1369. Okay, so we know that in this case, we're going to find the square root individually, a square root of 3,600 over a square root of 1,369. So the first one will be 60, and this one, uh, 37, uh, which is going to be uh, a prime number. So no longer can it be simplified. And A was the sign of the square in the picture. So the question said, just add this. So we're gonna go 60 plus 37 is going to be 97, which is the answer for this very, 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 very long question. Question number 28. The elves have to choose who will go to the annual magic conference. They sit in a circle and the chief elf, Elvin, starts counting round the circle, starting with himself. Every second elf is count every second elf counted drops out of the circle and counting continues until Elvin drops out. So the, the moment Elvin drops out the chief, the counting is stopped. All those left in the circle go to the conference. This year, there are 1,000 elves in the circle. How many will go to the conference? Now, before we start with the 1,000 elves to understand this procedure a little bit more, let's see if we had just had 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if we just had 10, and remember, and A is Elvin. The first one is Elvin, the first one. So if you start counting with him, the second one will be canceled and then we're counting again. One, two, fourth is gone. Then six will be gone and eighth will be gone and tenth will be gone. So if we have actually any number of even elves in the circle, because it will always count in twos and the last elf will be counted off. So that means for the second round, Elvin will still be there. So Elvin will not be taken out in that round if it has even number of elves. Now, because now let's look at the second round now, because only one, three, five, seven and nine are left and these are five elves. There are five elves left now. Let's see what happens now. So again, we will count with Elvin. So one, two, this is gone. One, two, this is gone. And now because the counting had to continue and I have laid them out in a, in a straight linear manner, but actually they are in a circular manner. So after this one and the second turn will go to Elvin, the second count and Elvin will be dropped out in the next go. So if the number of elves is actually odd, so in, not in that round, but the next following round, the first person to get out will be Elvin and the game will be stopped here. So this is the basis of our question here. This is very important to understand before we pro start proceed, proceeding with the thousand elves. All right, now let's begin. So for thousand elves, yes, we can go on and four, five, six, and it will go on to nine, 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 and 1000 now again when we elvin is number at number one when he starts counting this is even number so remember in an even number of elves elvin will not be dropped off all the even numbers all the elves at even numbers will be counted off so we have after the first round we just have 500 elves more we started with the one th we started with 1000 and it has now come to 500 elves. Let's see which elves are remaining. So we have one, three, five, seven, and continue because the last one is 999. That means the one before 998 would have been gone. We have 997 remaining. And these are 500 elves. And again, 500 is an even number. That means Elvin will be saved again. He would not be out in this round as well. 
three, three would be gone, seven, and as you can see, the remaining, the remaining elves have a gap of four here now, because the next one, if I, if I would have continued, would have been nine and then 11. So nine would have survived and 11 would have gone. So you can see the pattern that the surviving elves for the next round are increasing in order of four. So that means the last one will be, let me just work it out. All right, so continuing, yes, the, in this one, every pair, the last one will be gone and 997 will survive. And the one before 997, because it has all gap of four, the one before would have been 993. That's the one who survived. Now let's continue on. So there were 500 elves in this round. So for the next round, because half of them are gone, there are only 250 left for the next round and the next round let's write it out so elvin is still there and the next one is five nine and continuing we have nine nine three and nine nine seven elf elf number nine nine three and nine nine seven we have 250 of these again that's an even number that means elvin will still be saved in this round and 250 means there are 125 pairs and let's start crossing let me write actually one more uh five nine and thirteen and that. So if we start from Elvin again, this would be dropped out and this would be dropped out. And now again, looking at the difference. So this time is eight. So every, uh, starting from Elvin, if you count at, add up eight, that's the, el that's the elf that's saved. So start nine and seven would be gone this time and nine, nine, three would be saved. And the one before nine, nine, three, nine, nine, three minus eight is nine. 985 would have been saved and now is the interesting point because right now we have 125 elves left there were 250 before 125 are gone 125 are remaining and that means after this round elvin will have to go this is an odd number and remember we looked at the beginning when there whenever there are odd number of elves that means in the next round Elvin will be the first one to go and the game will stop there in the counting or whatever you call it. So the remaining ones are one and now nine and nine plus eight is 17 and going forward we have nine nine three and the one before was nine eight five. So these are the ones survived and this is Elvin. So again continuing let me write down one more actually. 17 plus eight is 25. So now these ones are gone. And again, 993 would be gone this time. Oh, not 993 this time. This time 985 would be gone. Because in remember, there are six, 62 perfect pairs. 62 pairs in 125. And this is the 125th elf that was we saved and that is why after 90, 985 when we start counting one and two in the next round elvin will be gone now so we have 62 perfect pairs out of which each one there is one elf that will be crossed out from each pair and the game this round will finish at 985 but in the next round after 993 elvin will be counted out so actually if you look at that there were 62 pairs 62 people and now we have one less elvin which is 61 so there are 61 elves that can go that survived and that can go to the who can go to the magic conference so the answer according to me is zero zero six one sixty one elves can go to the magic conference Question 29, two wheels are fixed to an axle as shown.
Due to their different sizes, the two wheels trace to concentric circles when rolled on the level ground. In centimeters, what is the radius of the circle traced on the ground by the larger wheel? Now let's check some fundamentals together. So if I rotate this circle, okay, around its pivot point, like around its center, do you think this circle will start to move maybe going right or maybe going left? Well, if you say always yes, the answer is not correct. Well, it depends. If there is no friction, okay, and then you start to rotate this, okay, then this circle would start to, to just go round and round, but it doesn't move, okay? But if there is friction, okay, when you rotate it this way, it also starts to move to the right direction. But the question is, how far does it move? Well, if you go one round, okay, we know that the perimeter of that is going to be 2 pi r. But because there is friction and they are in full contact, so this one, like imagine it, the circle, this is the surface and this is the circle, this one will start to move exactly 2 pi r as well. So imagine that this distance is 2 pi r. So the center of this will start to move 2 pi r like this, okay? Now we know that these two disks or wheels, okay, both of them will go around the circle, okay, but the bigger disk, okay, will go around the bigger circle, okay. So the bigger circle is this one, the smaller one is this one. So now let's imagine this, okay. If this shaft rotates once, okay. The small one will go 2 pi multiplied by 70. The big one will go 2 pi 105. Okay. And I want to write them in a fraction in C. So I'm going to write 2 pi 105 divided by 2 pi 70. Okay. So 2 pi will cancel by 2 pi. And 105 divided by 35 is 3. 70 divided by 35 is 2. So it's going to be 3 over 2. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. That means if we, for example, if the right-hand side disk, okay, this one, if this one rotates once, Okay, maybe it goes this much. Okay, it could go more or less. But the bigger one will go 3 over 2 of the same amount. It goes more. How much more? 1.5 more. Then it rotates another time. This one will go a little more. This one will go a little more. So what I can say here, okay, if the perimeter of this large circle is p, I'm going to call it p, the perimeter of the huge one, the larger one, will be 3 over 2 of p. So we know that this circle, that this one goes, again, if this one is p, the larger circle over here is 1.5 of that amount. So uh, the ratio of the perimeters is the ratio of this radius over this radius. So now we know that the small one, okay, will go around a smaller circle, okay, like this one, which is going to be this. I'm showing it like this. And earlier we saw that uh, the perimeter, if this, the perimeter of the circle it goes around is P, this one, the larger one, okay, will be 3 over 2p, okay? It's going to be like this.
And now we want to find the radius of this circle, right? That's what the question is. And then find the radius of this bigger one. To do that, there's only one more step to find, okay? So this distance over here. Uh, I did the same question for a senior level, and uh, I forgot that uh, the question meant like a, a level ground, and I just used here 120, which is not correct, okay? Because 120 is going to be this distance over here, okay? That's the distance, the uh, perpendicular distance, the distance of the shaft. Okay, this is 120. Okay, it's a little large, let me make it smaller. Okay, so this one is 120. But what do we really want is a larger distance. It's from here all the way here. You could even see it in the picture that this one is a little larger than that one. Okay, and uh, what I want to do to make this question easier, see, if I lower this and put it here, and uh, we know that here it was making a 90 degree angle, right? It would become, so let me draw it like this. Okay. Would become something like this. And this is 90 degrees. Okay. So this line, as we said, is 120. Okay, we want to find this. In order to do that, we need to find this blue one. So this much. Okay, so I want you to think about this. Okay, so this is the radius of the big circle. It was 105. Okay. So from here to here was 70. So I'm going to put it here. And let's see if I move it around here. Oops. If I move this one, this 70 here, I can't move it. Move. It doesn't want to move. Come on. Uh -huh. So if I put this one over here, you will see that this one is 70. Right, I just moved it. It was the radius of this one. So the blue part, it would be the big radius 105 minus the 70. So this blue part over here is this big 105 minus the 70, which is going to be 35. So this one is 35. So what we really need to do, okay, to find this distance, we're going to have this, this uh, right angle triangle, okay? So it's gonna be a square root of 120 squared plus 35 squared. Are we gonna deal with these big numbers? Well, of course not, because both of these numbers okay, are divisible by 5, okay? So instead, let's find this, divide this by 5, it becomes a 7. Divide this one by 5, it's going to be a 24, okay? And we're going to find this one, okay? And then we multiply it back by 5, okay? Because this one is too large, okay? So when we do this, okay, this one will become twenty-five, right? So I'm gonna be okay. You could calculate it, but this one will be actually twenty-five. So we divide each one by five. We multiply it back by five. This one is one hundred twenty-five. So this distance is 125 centimeters. So this distance is actually 125 centimeters. Not 120.
Okay, now let's write a simple equation. If this radius is actually r, the large one will be r plus 125. Okay, so the small one will become 2 pi r would be the perimeter of the small one. The big one will be 2 pi r plus 125 okay but they're not equal okay this is the small one the smaller one if we multiply it by 3 over 2 will be equal to the big one that's the only equation we need to write okay so let's go and cancel so this 2 pi cancels with this 2 pi this no, it's good. Okay, so the left side will be three over two r. Okay, is equal to r plus one hundred twenty five. Okay, so we're going to have half of r is equal to. 125 so r is equal to 250 but remember this one is the small one the question is asking for the large radius this one so we just have to find r plus 125 which would be 375 okay so this is the right answer I did this question for the senior level, but I forgot that they will tilt because they are on a level ground. So I use 120 over here, but the right one is this 125 because of course, okay, they rotate a little. Okay, that's it. Okay, for question 9, because it is exactly the same as question 28, the senior level, I'm not going to record the video again. I'm just going to copy and paste it to this solution guide. Okay, now let's move on to uh, question 30, actually. A tromino is a shape made from three squares traced on grid lines. A 2 by 3 grid can be tiled by trominoes in exactly three ways as shown. Okay. Now we count two tilings that are reflection of each other as different. Similarly, two tilings that are rotations of each other are counted as different. In how many ways can a 3 by 6 grid be tiled by trominoes? Okay. So I think the best way to deal with the question is recursive tiling. I'm going to explain it a little, and uh, it will just make the question a little simpler to deal with, but it's not going to make it easy. Okay, now let's begin. We just saw that uh, um, we could tile this two by three uh, rectangle in three different ways, okay? Uh, and recursive tiling means we're going to have the previous information, okay, to guess the number of a 3 by 3, okay. So it's going to be like this. Now for the first one, like how many ways can we start the far left side? Well, one way would be to go, okay, by a, by a vertical bar, okay, in an eye shape. If I do this, okay. How many ways can we actually tile this? It's going to be exactly, okay, three, okay. And this will be repeated over and over for uh, different rectangles. So here, that will be just the three for now. But what else, how else can we fill this tile? We could also go, the starting position could also be looking like this, okay. So it's going to be another one here. So we have a three and plus one. Now, what other ways can we start? Okay. Now we also have all this ways of starting the shape. 
So I'm going to think about it like this, okay? Now, okay, when I make this shape, I'm not going to use uh, the bar shapes. I'm just going to use the L shapes. If I'm just going to use the L shapes only, okay, I can do it like this one way. Or I could do it this way. So for any shape like this, two by three, if I'm going to only use L shapes, I have two ways, right? So maybe I will start like this, which is going to be two. Or I could also go with another horizontal rectangle like this, which will add another two. So it's going to be plus two by two. I could also start with this one, right? The left hand side could also be started with these shapes. Again, I'm going to have two ways of doing it, right? Maybe like this, okay? Or maybe like this, again, two ways, okay? But remember, if I put the shape here like this, I've already counted this when I put this line over here, okay? Plus another two ways. So uh, four, another four, and then plus two. So we have 10 ways, okay? Okay, we just saw that this one, three by three. Okay, we're going to have 10 ways of tiling it. And then we're going to use that again. Look, again, uh, we just have to start, we have to think about it, just the starting point. How many ways can we start the left, the far left bar, okay? So one way would be like this. If we do it like this, again, you see that we're gonna have a three by three, uh, square, which is going to be 10 ways exactly, right? All the previous ways that we had, it was like three vertical, it was like three horizontal, like all of them will repeat. So when I want to count this, I will start by this number 10 right away. Okay, now uh, what is the another way of starting it? This shape, right? Think about it like this. We just want to use L shapes here. We had two ways if we are only using L shapes, like maybe one or something like this, two ways of doing this. But for this one, okay, we could still use vertical bars. So it will be this three over here. So I'm gonna add a two plus three to it. Two times three will be added to this, okay. And remember, look, if I add a horizontal one like this, okay, maybe like this, or maybe I could also take it up two ways, right? And we're only going to use L shapes, okay? If I put it L shapes like this, I'll have two ways of doing this, but you see that the other ones will be forced like this. Okay, so only two, but because it could be here or here, we're gonna have two times two. Okay. So, uh, but we also had this way. We could have, we could also start this line, okay, by horizontal lines also. So if I start like this, the horizontal lines, well, this one will be forced the vertical. So it will be like added by one. So you see, all of these will be repeated and are easy to count. But uh, there are also some other shapes that are tricky, right? So maybe like this, okay? That would be like one way, okay? Or I could just start it like this. So that makes it a little more difficult uh, than I thought it would be. So, but here we had this plus one and then we have this plus two over here, okay? So uh, let's just add all of these numbers. Okay, we have 10 plus six plus four, 20, and it's going to be a 23. Now uh, we could spot a little pattern here, okay? Because two times of this plus this three will actually be this 23 over here, okay? 
So the next one, if we have two times of this is 46 plus, and if it is 56, then we have a nice pattern. Okay, we could continue it forever. Let's see now. Okay, so again, let's think about it like this. If we start from the left hand side, okay, one way to fill it will be just by one vertical bar, okay? Then we'll have a three by four available. So quickly, 23 ways of doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna write 23 right here. Okay, 23. Also, we could start by filling it all horizontal lines. So you see, we're focusing on the first line. This is also another way of filling it. When we do so, there is only one way here, but we have a two by three available. So, which would be this one over here. So I'm going to add a three. Now the problem with the question is if you make any mistakes throughout the process, then everything will be wrong. So my solution could also be wrong because, well, I don't have the answer key to check. So if one slip, it's over. And now what if we have like this, we started by the L shapes like this, okay? We're not gonna use any vertical lines here because we have already done this, okay? So if we have two shapes like this, and then we have a three by three, which is going to be like this. So I'm going to add a 20 here. Okay, we also have, what if we started like this? Okay, remember, this is, we're just gonna use L shapes, okay? So, because if I use, like for example, horizontal lines, this one will be horizontal lines, we have already counted it, just L shapes. So L shapes, we're gonna have two ways of doing this. Also, I could put it down here. So another two ways here. But when we have this two ways, there's also this part that could be filled any way we want. So again, three. So for this one that is here, it's gonna be two by three, but we're gonna have two of this because I said the other one could be lower as well. So it's gonna be, two times, two times three. Okay. Now, if you remember, we also had a weird shape. Uh, it was looking like this, right? And then a three and a three. So we still have that, but remember, see, if the first one is vertical, we could also have the same shape over here, right? But we have already counted this. It is, and this 23. So now let's go and write it here. We could also go like this again. L shape like this, L shape like this, a three. No, I didn't write it well. It could be like this, like this, A3, A3, and like this, okay? There is also another one, okay? So it could also be looking like this. So it's gonna be another two. But you see now, if you look closely, there are more. So it would be kind of like this, okay? Okay, now, um, there you go. We, we could also have, you see, we're starting with an L shape and we're gonna get this as well. Okay, so because it's symmetrical, we're gonna have another one. So it's gonna be added plus two. Okay, so you get the idea here. That makes the question extremely tricky. Maybe there is a better way of doing the question. So if you know any of it, just please make sure that you write it in the comment section below. So let's just add everything we have here. So it's going to be uh, 43, 46, so it's gonna be like 50, and we're gonna have three times two times two, okay? It's going to be 12 and 60, it's gonna be 72. So now let's count it one more time. Uh, so 23 
and 20, 43, 46, plus 4, 50, and, and this one. So now let's count it one more time. It's going to be 23 plus 20, uh, 43, 46, plus 4, 50, and 12. It's going to be like 62. Okay. So unfortunately, the pattern is not repeating. So we have to do it again for the fifth one. Okay. Now let's count the last one again. Uh, we have to focus from the left side. Okay. How many different ways are there to build it from left? Okay. So that's the first one. Easy peasy. So it's going to be like a three, five and another 62 repeating. We could also start by another vertical one, just like this. Okay. Remember, I'm not going to use vertical lines. Okay. Because I've already counted this, the first one. So two ways of doing this and we'll have a four by three. It's going to be like this. So, um, this one two multiplied by 23. So I'm going to write that here two times 23. We also have a three. We could also start with three horizontal one. This will be left. So another 10 will be added. So we also have this one we could also start like this. We have two ways here, or we could go lower another two ways here. So it's going to be two by two. Okay. And then this one, we could also include everything here, this 10 over here. So two twenties, it's going to be 40. So I'm going to write it here. We have two, two times 10. Okay. So what else was there? We also had a shape like this. Okay. So now these two will be left. Okay. So three ways like this. This was two. This is now three and another six. Okay. We also had a shape like this. Okay. Uh, right. So we're going to have that two again because this one, the last one will be forced. So another two. And one more shape that I can spot that is new again is going to be like this. So we're going to have, again, because symmetrical, we're going to have two of this. Okay. Could I be making a mistake somewhere? Of course. Okay. So now let's count all of this. Okay. So uh, it's going to be, uh, this one is a 40. They together are 50. This is another 10. So together 60. So it's going to be a 60 plus 46 plus 62. Okay. So it's going to be like eight and, uh, 12 for 168. Hopefully this is the right answer, but, uh, definitely the approach is like this. Okay. Maybe you could organize it better, right? Uh, at the beginning, maybe you could think differently. I made boxes like this. Okay. Maybe you could uh, think about it in a different way, but you have to go like this. You have to think about how many ways can I start it? Once you have a complete shape, okay, this part, you will go back to the previous one. That's like the recursive one, right? The next one is dependent on the previous one. So. So, I, and that's going to be uh, the end of this guide. So I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And by the way, if you're preparing uh, for any math competitions or any physics competitions, uh, contact me. We could have classes together. And also pretty soon I'm going to uh, make a video of the lessons that I actually have with my students. So you could just get a feeling of how the class is. So that's enough. 
Thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope you learned some new techniques and methods for processing and working out the solutions. All the best for your exams. Do like and subscribe our channels and give us your feedback so that we can keep bringing you content like this. Toodles!